Welcome to another episode of One on One. I'm your host, Mitch LaFon, and of course, this week, it is Mark Striegel joining me. How are you, Mark? I am excellent. I'm excellent. Looking forward to seeing you tomorrow night in person. In Poughkeepsie. At four by Fate show, yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to a Four by Fate, and uh, I was actually uh, on YouTube just uh, about 20 minutes ago looking at some Four by Fate clips and interviews, and... Uh, I saw a couple of the guys did some interviews where they were mentioning me and stuff, and I and I, I felt so um, humble. I guess is the word for it. I was like, oh, that's so nice of them to have, to have to have brought up, you know, my name and stuff. So that was that was kind of cool, um, you know. But let, let's talk about this episode first. Yeah, of all, absolutely. <clears throat> as you know, every episode is brought to you by the Heavy Montreal uh, Festival that takes place August ninth and tenth at Parc Jean Drapeau in Montreal. Uh, this year, so many people, Three Days Grace, Voivod, Twisted Sister, Bad Religion, Lamb of God, Offspring, Anthrax, Slayer, and of course, my favorite, Metallica. You know, when you talk about how a band does it live and does it right, there is no other, nobody is supreme beyond Metallica. They play set lists that spans their entire career. Any song that comes up, they will play it. They... um they change every night. They listen to their fans. Yeah, great band. Great, great yeah, band. Yeah, absolutely. But, uh, you know, speaking of great bands, last year at, uh, or a couple of years ago at Heavy Montreal, we had Rob Zombie. And uh, on this episode, I have his brother, Michael, uh, known professionally as Spider One of the band Power Man 5000. They have a brand new album, Builders of the Future. And I got to say, you know, um, I've never been this big Power Man 5000 fan, but I was sent a copy of the album and I put on the first single, How to Be a Human, and I really dug it. Uh, You know, I would describe it as sort of Rob Zombie meets Depeche Mode, but, you know, but it's this great sort of industrial gothic metal i i really enjoyed it so uh, are you familiar at all with powerman uh somewhat yeah a, a friend of mine actually it's funny the guy who did the the show open for this podcast and talking metal podcast is a guy named maroon vankatesh who used to play in a band called el dopa right. and they were label mates with uh powerman, powerman 5000 and you know they were both out of the boston massachusetts area and uh, you know i know that El Dopa has long since broken up, but Power Man 5000 has just, uh, you know, continued to evolve through the years. Yeah. And so it's funny that you mentioned uh, label mates, because one of the things I talked to Spider One about is the new uh, T-Boy Records, and of course the label mates on that one are Megadeth and Zombie. It's sort of this new imprint by uh, Universal Music, and so Power Man is on that. And, uh, you know, it's an interesting interview. We, we, we obviously talk about touring and we obviously talk about the new album, but we talk about where, where they've been the last five years because their last original music album was 2009. And, um, you know, Rob and Michael, or, or Spider One, they don't really talk about being brothers and stuff. And so I, I actually asked Spider, you know, is he in competition with Rob? And uh, I, th- I thought his answer was quite refreshing, actually. So, cool. you know, why don't, why don't we just uh, take a listen? Great interview with Power Man 5000's Spider One. Um, we're here with the Spider of Power Man 5000. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you doing? Good. Good. So we're talking uh, the new album, Builders of the Future. It's been... Um, it's, you know, it's been five years since the, the last album of original material. You had that covers album, what, three, four years ago? Um, what was the concept with this album? What were you trying to put forth? Well, I mean, you know, musically, you know, speaking, I think that we wanted to sort of continue on the path where we left off with the, the album before, which was mm-hmm. called Somewhere on the Other Side of Nowhere. You know, we've done a lot of, I feel like the band kind of came full circle at that point. We had, right. you know, we had, Establish a particular sound back in, you know, with the Tonight the Stars Are Full album, and, you know, the very electronic, metal, dancey thing with, right. you know, sort of sci fi references and stuff. And, you know, I mean, inevitably, when you sort of become known for something as a creative person, you generally want to reject it at some point. Right. Um, well, you want to move so forward. We, 
you know, try some new things. And we, and we, we did that and we stripped it down and, you know, we've, we've sort of been all over the map over the years. And it just, uh, you know, on the, on the album before this, I really felt comfortable kind of planting the flag back in that world and saying, you know what, this is what this band is. And this is what, how, you know, this is what we do best. And this is obviously what people like, you know, whoever's a fan of the band, this is their favorite thing. And so when we started with Builders of Future, I had a very clear agenda, which was the opposite of generally what we do, which is generally I want to turn it on its head and, you know, and, and try something completely different. And this one, I was like, you know what, let's not do that. Let's just continue and, you know, just solidify this is the sound of the band, but just do it better than we ever have before. Let's make sure the songs are crafted in such a way and our performances are great and just just do the best version of Power Man that we've ever done. And I, I really think we, we succeeded, you know. It's a simple goal, but, it, you know, sometimes it really helps to, to have a clear, um, a clear path when you make a record. Because sometimes if you don't, you, you know, you end up with just a, a big mess of a record. And I feel like this record is very focused and very clear and it's intent, you know. Yeah, and, you know, and sometimes change just for change's sake it's just a big mess, right? I mean, sometimes you got to stick to what you what you do best. Um, you know, we're 2014, of course, I always talk about downloading and iTunes and just doing singles. Um, is there an, an actual reason to make an album in this day and age, or can you just sort of get away doing a singles? And, or, or why is it important to actually put out, you know, 10, 11 songs and move forward? Yeah, you know, it's funny you ask that, because I, I was asking that same question, you know, for a long time I was thinking, well, shouldn't we, maybe we just put out singles, you know, put a single out every month or every couple of months. And, but I do think that, you know, yeah, the culture of music has, has changed and it's become much more, you know, single oriented or, you know, as they say, cherry picking, you know, yeah. kids go online, they say, ah, I don't like that song, they listen to it for five seconds and, you know, then they pick something else. And, you know, that, that is definitely where, we, where we're at. But I do think there still is enough of a cult ingrained culture of the album format and also you know not to mention whether you're whether you're out there promoting a single or an entire album it's an enormous amount of work and you know and even relatively speaking an enormous amount of money spent so i guess i guess the philosophy at least from a record label standpoint is why not have you know more content you know if you're gonna if you're gonna try and you know have the band do interviews to promote something or go out and tour or you know, whatever, you might as well be, I guess, uh, putting it, out a, an album, you know. Yeah, does, does it change your, your approach to songwriting, though? Do you, do you sort of sit there and go, okay, i got to come up with these 12 songs that all sort of fit together? Or you just go, eh, you know what, they're only going to play one song anyway. I can just piss off the other 11 and do whatever. Well, no, I mean, I've never thought like that. I okay. mean, I, in, in, I mean, maybe maybe there are bands that think like that. I mean, I've... In fact, you would have more of a reason to think like that back in, you know, before, you know, when, 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 when your only option was essentially buying an entire record, right. you know, buying an entire CD for $19 at the mall because you heard one song on the radio. I mean, that's, if there was ever a time to be lazy, it was now. It was, it was, it was then you'd go like, ah, fuck it. Let's make a great single. They have to buy the record to get the song. So right. we pretty, you know, that's so, but you know, honest, never, never saw like that. I mean, and and I, I I don't know if any band has ever, you know, I think that we all go into the studio thinking like we're gonna make the best record we've ever made and we're gonna make every song kick ass and you know, it'd be very bizarre, you know, to have a mindset like, Well, let's just write one good song. <laughs> That's right. I I you know, maybe somebody thinks I like that. I, I never have. I plus I like a good a great album. I like a good listen. If I have a band that I love I want to hear more than one song, and I want to, you know. You want and to. as we all know, sometimes the better songs are not necessarily the singles either. So yeah, that, that's oh. certainly what I would agree with. When you get to a band like Aerosmith or something like that, you you worked recently on a TV show or a TV series called Death Valley. Um, how was that actually? You know, not being the singer up front and being sort of a behind the camera guy. Tell me about the experience and sort of compare and contrast, sort of the lead singer versus producer role. Yeah, I mean, it was it was honestly the, like the greatest three months of my life. I had such a great time with it, and uh, you know, because you're getting all the satisfaction of being creative right. uh, with with no pressure of having to be the one like either on camera or on stage. And it was very, you know, just, it was 
it was liberating, on it, quite honestly, just on a personal level to be able to go to set and not give a fuck what I looked like. You know, yeah. like if I had to, you know what I mean? No one was going to be looking at me. So, it, but like, again, you get to, you know, you're, you're, you know, the, the creative process is, is what's satisfying. It's not really the notoriety or someone knowing your name or taking your picture. I mean, that's all nice, but there's not really a lot of value to that. You know, it doesn't, you don't go home satisfied because someone wants to take a picture with you. You, know, you go home satisfied because you did something cool or you, you solved a problem or you, you know, you created something. Um, yeah. but, um, but yeah, I mean, generally speaking, it was, it was, you know, it's, it's a very different process too, because it's a, it's a bigger, uh, you know, being in a band playing live is, you know, in, in immediate gratification, you know, you play a show and people are there and they clap and whatever they do. And, and also even making a record is a very small process. I mean, it's generally just you and your band and maybe one or two other people, maybe, right. you know, um, but whereas, you know, producing a TV show, I mean, it, and our show was not, you know, some massive show. It was, a, you know, an MTV show, scripted show, but it was still like, even at our scale, we probably had 150 employees at any moment on, sta- uh, on set. So it's a much bigger uh, and involved process for sure. You know, just listening to you speak, I hear an enthusiasm in your voice when you talk about the movie making. Is that something that you want to do more of, or the you know the TV series? Is that something you want to do more of? Do you want to be a producer? Do you want to be an actor? I don't really have any interest in acting. Okay. Um, I just don't think I would be very good at it. Uh, even though you know people go like, "What are you talking about? You're on stage all the time." But it's a very different kind of performing. Right. You know, I feel like the, I think I feel like a musical performance is not based in reality, whereas, you know, having to sit down and pretend to have lunch with somebody, you know, is is a different, you know, I I just don't know. I I think I might be too self-aware to be able to do that. But yeah, in terms of being like writing, producing or directing, it's really like my other great passion. And, you know, I got a taste of it with Death Valley and it really is, you know, I've since, you know, created a bunch of other properties and, you know, I haven't, haven't been able to to sell them yet, but it's such a, it's a very difficult you know, process because, you know, everybody in Hollywood is pitching a show or writing a movie and, you know, it's very hard to do and I feel fortunate that I, that I was able to do it at least once and confident I'll do it again, but it, it can take years. I and mean, even Death Valley, from the inception of the idea, took, I think, six years before we got on the air. So, um, but it definitely is something I, yeah, I, I absolutely, and, you know, after the dust settles on this album and maybe touring one is down, it's something I'm going to start looking at again for sure. Yeah, because I, I mean, I, you know, listen, I, I'm just speaking to you now and I can just hear in your voice that it's like, oh, you, you got that, that excitement there. Um, can I just quickly ask you about your brother, Rob? Is, is there a sense of competition with him? Um, not, I wouldn't say so. You know, I, we've never, I've never felt that from him and I certainly have never given that. You know, I think it's, um, but okay. the reality, we, uh, we, you know, we talk a lot about, um, you know, what we're doing in the business together. We're, we're really good sounding boards for each other, you know, and I think that we take each other's opinions seriously. Right. And, um, you know, it, it's not a competitive thing. It's, it's really just like, I feel like there's, a, there's enough for everybody. You know what I mean? I mean, it definitely, it poses its, you know, moments and challenges when, you know, it's, I mean, I, I'm not like one of those guys who, you know, has a famous sibling and won't discuss it or talk about it. I, I you know, I don't feel like there's anything wrong with it. And I know that it's probably an interesting subject for people because it's not that common you know that you would have no but 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 sibling rivalry is very common you know listen uh, you were born exactly two days before i was born and uh, rob was born around the same time as my brother and even though we're in the sort of different business and stuff we there's still that are you know i still want to be better than him in a sense <laughs> do you get into right. that at I mean, all? I, I mean look and there may be you know there may be that that you know because i think that's true in anything that you do, it's not just with a sibling. You know, I, I feel that way. Okay. When we go, when we go play a, a radio festival and there's 20 bands on the bill, you better fucking believe I want to be the band that people remember when they go right. home. You know, like you're all, you know, it's a community of musicians and you're all friends. But when it's time to go on stage, you're like, fuck you, you know, and like you want to make them afraid to go on after you. So of course, there's always a competitive. And it'd be okay. crazy. You you wouldn't do what you do unless you had some of that. But you can't also, you know, some people take that too far, and it and it is to their detriment. You know, right. they're just they. You're, you're they, not. They become parents. 
they become paralyzed if somebody else is doing better than them or whatever. And you can't, you can't do that. You have to, at a certain point, just, you know, focus on your own situation. And there's always going to be somebody better than you, bigger than you, right. more money than you, better looking than you. You, know, you can't live your life worried about that shit. Worried about that stuff. But, but still, at some point when how to be a human uh, gets into the top 20, you must call them up and say, hey, by the way, <clears throat> I'm in the top uh, 10, <laughs> right? I haven't yet, but maybe I'll be in the top 10 when I get married. <laughs> That's right. Um, uh, this summer, you're uh, co-headlining a U.S. tour with Head P. Um, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, um, that's going to be a lot of fun. I, I, we've played shows with those guys in the past. We've never toured with them before, but, you know, they had, they had um, you know, they sort of, I guess, came up in the same era as us, so mm-hmm. I think there's going to be a very similar interest and fan base, and uh, but they have a very different sensibility than us, so I think it's not going to be, you know, a repetitive show at all. I think it's, you know, it's going to be a cool night of, um, you know, music that will probably appeal to, you know, the e- either fan base, but different enough where it won't be, it won't be a boring night for sure. So I'm, lo- I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, you know, uh, now you're also signed on the uh, T-Boy record imprint. Um is there still a relevance or an importance to record companies? You know, with, with all the technology and the social media, can you just do it alone or do you really need that infrastructure? Well, I think you can do it alone. You know, I think it's all, rel- it's all relative and it's all, you know, it, it depends on everybody's perspective. You know, it's very easy for, um, you know, not easy, but, you know, say when a band like Radiohead or Nine Inch Nails decides to do something sort of, hey, we just put the record out on our website and, you can pay whatever you want, and then it's a huge success. Well, yes, of course it is, because it's Radiohead, and right. they have an enormous worldwide fan base. Which was built up you know, by a record company. Yeah, you, you can't expect some local band to do that and have it be like anyone even give a shit, you know. So I think it's all, you know, I think we all need things, you know. And, you know, and in and this situation, you know, you can do it yourself for sure, but you want to do it yourself, you know, and... You know, I, I, you know, that's one thing that's happened over the years is, you know, it used to be, I remember when my only responsibility was to make a great record, go on tour, play shows and, you know, and then worry, you know, worry about the creative end. What, what's the video going to be? What's the poster going to look like? And now you have all these other responsibilities. And I think that a lot of those things are, you know, valued a lot higher than they're actually worth, you know, meaning social media and Facebook and all this stuff. I don't... I don't really think it, it has a big impact on the success of anybody's career. Right. But I think that, unfortunately, uh, labels and managers and whoever else really thinks that it does. And, you know, I, I don't, I still think that, you know, it, it's, it's overvalued. But, um, I mean, but, I mean, whatever, too, I'm rambling. But I think that no. the answer to your question, yeah, there's still value to okay. record labels. And, yes, you can still, you can do it yourself. But I think it's all, like I said, it, it's all who you are and, you know, you know yeah. what? I, I don't know what you would do if you're a brand new band. I mean, I would try, I would probably try to do as much as I could on my own, right. and then it's, it's you know, create your own value, and then and then see what happens at that point. You know, as I, I see as we're approaching the 15 minute mark, let, let me finish with this. It's been five years since the last album of new music. Going forward, though, what do you see in terms of new material? Okay, we so we have the new album, but. Do you see another album in two years, another album in three years? Is this the final album? Like, how how do you see that playing forward? I have no idea. I mean, honestly, I, I always thought um, every time I make a record, well, I, I, let me take that back. Every time I've made a record up until this one, I always figure it's the last one. But for okay. some reason, I don't have that feeling on this one. So I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I, I feel like this may be a, a nice beginning to, like, part two. Oh, good. You know, nice. um, but, but considering how long the band's been around, um, you know, I better not take another five years um, or we're going to be doing the fucking wheelchair tour. And so I better, you know, <laughs> I have to get more productive for sure and try to, uh, you know, try to get music out more consistently. More and whether, it's, you know, whether it's a full album or like we had talked about earlier, maybe it's just a couple songs, you know, yeah. in six months, we put some songs, you know, we'll see. Let me just follow up on that answer before I let you go here is... Why did you think the albums were the last? What, what was it? Was it just the marketplace? You just didn't feel like it? You wanted to move into movie make? Like, why would you think, well, okay, this is my last one? Yeah, I don't know. It's a weird thing. Maybe it's just a... I think that there's just been so many um, ups and downs, gotcha. you know, that uh, sometimes you just put yourself in that place like, well, this could be it, you know? And, 
but which is kind of was kind of a ridiculous train of thought. Now that I look back, mm-hmm. you know, I don't I had no reason to really feel that way, but for whatever reason I did. And, um, I don't know, or maybe you just maybe it's maybe it's psychologically like you know something you do because you know it's almost like that you know the old corny saying like you know live every day as if this was your last. You know, maybe right, there's right. something to uh, you know acting like this is it. So you 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 give it everything you have and you know. Uh, not thinking like, oh, well, well, there'll be another one, you know. So, um, that's, yeah, I have, I have really no clue why I always thought that one. <laughs> well, hey, you know, listen, thank you for your time today. And uh, in August, when our birthdays roll around, I'll, I'll be uh, thinking of yeah. you and I'll play some Power Man 5000. Sounds good to me. All right, great talking to you. Thank you. Bye-bye right, now. Bye. Well, there you have it. There, there was a Spider One of a Power Man 5000, new album, uh, Builders of the future. Cool. Um, you know, fun album. Now, in part two today, I did something just for you. When we met up in New York right. uh, early May, you said to me, hey, do you know this Canadian band Spell? And I went, no. And uh, I looked them up on Facebook and on their websites and all that. And I downloaded the uh, the album, a, the the Full Moon Sessions. And I thought, wow, this, this band's pretty good. Yeah. Um, you know, I could see this band, you know, in five years and stuff, really develop, develop, uh, developing into a into a force. And so I said, okay, uh, you know, uh, let's interview them. Let's let's let's. I don't want to say throw them a bone, but let's let's talk about them. Let people know. Let people judge. And so, tell me a little bit about how you discovered them and what what attracted them to you, because you've been a, a champion of theirs. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I wish I had a, a cooler stor- story about discovering them. Like, you know, I was surfing the web and ended up on some, you know, website linking to obscure bands. However, yeah. it's not quite that cool. It's some, you know, their publicist sent me an email and I downloaded the stuff and and listened to it, which is kind of you know, by chance and fate, because I, as you know, we get so many links from these PR people saying, download this record, download that record, that probably 80% of the time I don't download the stuff. But with this one, you know, I read the description and, and anything that's new wave of, Brit- you know, compared to new wave of British heavy metal bands is always, you know, a big flag for me to, you know, look and listen a little deeper and i was very impressed you know there there there's part of me that feels what they're doing isn't anything new it isn't any they aren't like expanding the boundaries of of hard rock or heavy metal however i found it completely refreshing and it felt almost new to me just because so few bands are able to to, you know play that classic new wave of british heavy metal sound so authentically that uh you know and these guys do it you know they, yeah, they, they really, really they sound like they could be right from 1980 you know and, and from london you know so it's yeah it's great stuff it's great stuff it, it really does sound like early judas priest and early iron maiden and and sort of the tigers of pantang and all that stuff it, it doesn't sound you know like uh parental guidance judas priest it sounds like the old classic stuff and he, it, it's a trio out of Canada. There, there's a pair of brothers, you know, Cam and uh, Lester. And you know, they're they're, they're up and coming stars. So so once in a while, you know, we you know we interview Alice Cooper and we interview all these other guys. But once in a while, you, you got to sort of support the new guys, right? The new scene. So um, fun band. And and yeah. the good thing about this one is I had Cam and Lester on the call, and like I just said, they're brothers. And so I asked them, much like I did with Rob and Michael, I said, so any sibling rivalry? And uh, their answer was also very different and very unique. So, you know, take a listen, enjoy, spell, go check them out, go find their band camp, go find their Facebook, support something new, and, uh, you know, enjoy. Here's Cam and his brother. And uh, welcome back. We are here with uh, Cam Mesmer and, of course, his brother. Uh, from the band Spell, a new Canadian band. Um, Cam, why don't, why don't, why don't we get started? And, you know, a lot of folks that are going to listen to this probably don't know Spell. I think after having listened to your album, uh, Full Moon Sessions, they should know Spell. So, so let's, 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 let's fill in the blanks for folks. Where are you from and 
you know, how, how was it doing that first album and all that wonderful stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, we're from Vancouver, uh, BC, Canada. Mm-hmm. And, um, we've been playing together for a while. I've been, of course, playing with my brother Lester for, for right. many years. Um, and we've been playing heavy metal together for, you know, the past, you know, in this kind of, in this type of band for about the past seven years, we, we, uh, played a striker for, for a long time until we recently changed our name to spell. Um, that was partly because there's another band from Edmonton called striker and they're, they're, they're an excellent band. So, you know, we didn't want to step on their toes anymore, but also we're sort of taking a bit of a new direction and we've got a new record out the full moon sessions. Right. And uh, we're going to be touring across the country to support that in August and September. So, so tell us a little bit about Full Moon Sessions. Well, you know, let, let's, let's start at the beginning. Fans that don't know the band, what kind of music are, is this? Are, are you more in the Metallica vein? Are you more in the Rob Zombie vein? Are you more in sort of Kiss? What, what kind of fan base should, should check out Spell? I mean, other than everybody. Uh, we definitely play more of the uh, 70s and 80s okay. heavy metal. Early 80s, late and mid 70s, like Scorpions. Good. Uh, Thin Lizzy, Accept, Judas Priest, that kind of stuff, obviously, is the foundations of what we're doing. Good. And uh, recently, we've been incorporating a lot of other uh, genres further back into our sound to try to um, strike up a new path and, and broaden our music. So, so, um, <laughs> so, yeah. so tell me the challenges of a new band starting out. I mean, we've all heard the the older bands talk about oh, downloading has killed them, and, and you know, all this, you go to Facebook and the this and the so. <laughs> but you guys don't have a million dollars in the bank, so, so how is it starting out, and how do you get an album out there and known by folks? Well, I mean, perhaps it's that, you know, we don't have millions of dollars to lose, like you said, but you know, I'm, I firmly believe that in, in releasing music for free, you know, I think that if you can put it up there and people can go and download it, then they're more likely to, you know, listen to it on their own time and enjoy it, because, you know, Everyone likes a song more after hearing it five or ten times than they do after listening to a thirty-second clip. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so, tell me about Full Moon Sessions. When was this recorded? And you know, just tell me about the album. Yeah, well, it's called the Full Moon Sessions because it's not one. It's not one um, one session. It's a few sessions. We recorded right. two tracks of it back in uh, twenty ten. And then we recorded the rest of it um, in 20, 2012 and thirteen, um, and all of it was actually recorded uh, under under full moons. That's that's part of why it took so long. But you know, we really wanted to focus on getting getting the atmosphere right for this record and doing the best we could on it. Um, so you know, it's been a it's been a bit of a time coming, but it we feel it reflects um, you know sort of the best we've done during our entire span so far. That, um, so it's a little, it starts off in a bit more of like a you know mid eighties style of heavy metal. And then it kind of progresses a little bit towards you know what we're doing now and what our newer material is going to sound like, which is sort of a more a little bit more progressive, a little bit more seventies psychedelic sort of sound. Yeah, which, it's a great sound. I mean, I really think people should check it out. And, and if people do want to check it out, where can they go to get it? Yeah, well, like I said, it's all up for free download at um, spellofficial.bandcamp.com. Okay. And of course, you can also check out our Facebook.com/slash/spell/spell. Oh, perfect. Now. You know, in the in the first part of this episode, I was talking to uh, Spider One from Power Man Five Thousand, and of course, his brother is Rob Zombie, and we talked a little bit about sibling sibling rivalry. Uh, now they're in separate bands. You're in the same band. Is there any competition there? Is, is, how, how does that work? Uh, I wouldn't say that there's ever been uh, <laughs> too much competition, right. aside from maybe just a regular healthy dose that uh, <laughs> makes you strive to be better at what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, we play in the same band now. Of course, we, we played in other bands than each other for, for years prior to this. Um, and they're always kind of a bit, a bit, you know, a bit different from each other. So, you know, we, we, I'd say we work really well together at this point. We've been playing together for a long time. We sort of, we learn to play together. Does it make it, do you, do you think it makes it more difficult on, on a third or even at some point a fourth member? Do they sort of feel, oh, it's always these two brothers against me? <laughs> uh, I don't really think so. Okay. We only got, we're just a three piece, so exactly. Our guitarist Graham, he's not here today, but uh, see, you've already cut, you've already cut him out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he cut himself out on this one. <laughs> there you go. Um, so is that well? Let's let's get to the the tour. So the tour, there's a tour coming in August that's going to go through, all through Canada. Who is it with? It's Spell and who? Yeah, we're playing with our good friends Funeral Circle. They're they're okay. a dupe band, also from Vancouver. And we're really excited to travel with them. They're an excellent band. They've been friends of ours for quite some time, and they're you know they're doing something really cool in, in doom doom metal as well. I, I'd say. 
Yeah, and, and so what are the dates? Where 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 can people see this? Do, do you know the dates? When, when do you start? Gosh, well, we start. Uh, we we got a date in Vancouver on uh, August sixteenth, and then we're we're hitting the road on August twenty second, um, playing pretty much consecutive nights. We got almost every night booked up for three three weeks straight. Wow. So we're going from uh, Penticton, Calgary. Uh, where's it go? Regina. I can't remember all the days exactly, but Saskatoon. Regina, Saskatoon. Uh, well, I know yeah. you're in Montreal on August 30th, so that's that's yeah, certainly yeah, something that's right. I've got to come check out because that's that's my hometown. Yeah, but, fantastic. But you know, some of the bands that that I that I that I normally deal with go out on tour and they do three shows a week and they stay at the Ritz Carlton and <laughs> and it's a very different experience. Uh, tell me a little bit about how it is for you guys. I mean, it's the van, I would imagine, and it's it's cramped quarters and it's no showers for three days. I mean. Tell me how the touring experience for you is. Well, yeah, you know, there's a lot of benefits to being a three-piece, but one of the downsides, I guess, is that we've only got three wallets to tackle on this one. So, you know, we're, we're really just trying to play it as tight as we can. We've pretty much got a show every night. We're, we're traveling in a tiny minivan with, that's going to be just absolutely packed. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we've got a couple of 27-hour drives in there, so we're going to be pretty much driving all night, constantly do trading shifts to our next gig. It's going to be, it's going to be rough, but we're excited. Is it worth it? <laughs> well, you know, we don't know that yet. Yeah, we, we haven't found out <laughs> We're yet. We're gonna find out. Probably not uh, financially, but that's <laughs> not the point really for us. It's to get out there and play in all the cities we haven't played before and spread our music around for those who enjoy it. Yeah, I, th I think people have lost the appreciation because w when you when you know when you go to the internet and you see the Judas Priest and you see that and you see their lifestyles, you go, "Wow, it's so easy." <laughs> but but you forget that. You know, it takes three guys to hop in a van and slug it out for a while. So, you know, I'm wishing you all the best success. Hopefully, uh, fans will, will, will listen to this and, and check you out because I did after hearing you on the Talking Metal digital podcast. And I went, oh, this band's really good. They've, they've really cool. got something. Well, thank you so much for your support. We really do appreciate that. Yeah. And, uh, of course, uh, if you go to the Bandcamp website and stuff, you can pick up a T-shirt Yep, we've got uh, vinyl LPs up for sale as well, and we'll soon have CD copies of the Full Moon Sessions as well. And we'll soon have tapes too. Yeah. Oh, good. And I, I, need, I certainly need one of those CDs. Um, you know, since these were really just sessions that you sort of like a collection of demos, is there going to be a proper album coming soon? And when would yeah. that be? We've got, our, we've got our whole next album uh, entirely written. And we're, uh, we, we just spoke with, our, with the studio we're hoping to get into uh, last night, actually. Okay. So we don't have any dates set for that, but, you know... We're really excited about that, and we're looking forward to doing that as soon as we can. We, we just kind of want to find the right support for releasing it. Yeah, and that's the challenge, though. How do you find the support? Do you just sort of throw it up on iTunes and, and direct fans there, or do you believe in the concept of a record company supporting it? Uh, well, I mean, a, bit of, a bit of both. That we're not expecting, uh, you know, huge heaps of money or anything to record it, but yeah. uh, we're shopping around at the moment for a label that we feel is. Uh, you know, aesthetically on the same board as us, <clears throat> who's going to release it in a way, a proper way to a, a broad enough audience and put it out there with the way we want it. Yeah. So that takes a little bit of time, I guess. Yeah. And uh, I definitely recommend that, that people go check it out. And I, and I certainly hope uh, a record company does take a chance on you and, and get in on the ground because uh, what I heard, I really liked. And I think uh, once it gets really nicely refined, it, it'll be killer. Uh, absolutely. It's going to be something that everybody should hear. Um, yes, yeah. our, our new our, 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 our newer songs are certainly I would say um, more complex than our last ones. You know, we've, we've been working really hard, and we've got our we've got our harmonies down better, and we've got a lot more changes and stuff. You know, we're not trying to go in, into a real obscure sort of sound, but we nope. feel you know we, we've progressed a lot on we've our instruments. A lot of players since uh, since the songs that are you're hearing on the full moon sessions. Yeah. So the new stuff should be better than that. Absolutely. So where where let, let's do all the plugs. Let's hit the Facebook, the Twitter. There, just hit, hit it everything. Let's plug away. Yeah, sure. So we've got um face uh, Facebook dot com slash spell spell. We've got a spellofficial dot bandcamp dot com. We've got an Instagram at spellofficial, uh, and I think that's it right now. Okay, perfect. Hey guys, thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thanks a lot, Mitch. Thanks so much. Absolutely, and uh, you know, folks listening. Support your local bands, whether you're in Australia or in England or in you know, France. Go support your local bands. And if you're in Canada, support these Canadian boys. They, they definitely deserve it. Cheers. Cheers. Thank Thanks. you. What you guys just heard was 
Mitch's interview with two of the members of Spell, two brothers, Lester and Cam. A great band. I just actually bought the vinyl of the Full Moon Sessions, and uh, it, it sounds wonderful. I've been kind of getting back into vinyl these past few years, and I think it's cool when when young bands like this release stuff on vinyl. It's uh, it's kind of exciting for me because that's what I grew up on, you know, vinyl. Were you a cassette guy or a vinyl guy back in the days, Mitch? Listen, I, I've, I've always switched formats. So I went from vinyl over to the 8-track, over to the cassette, over to CD. Then I tried digital downloads. Then I went, screw that. Let's stick with CDs. So, uh, yeah, no, I'm a, I'm a CD guy. I, I just like convenience, you know. Uh, I, I like to put something in the car and drive off. I, I like to have it in my pocket, you know, with the digital stuff. Vinyl to me was always clunky. You'd play 15 minutes of music, and then you'd have to stand up and flip it over. It right, always, right. always just drove me crazy. <laughs> really, Right did. on. Right on. Yeah. Well, Full Moon Sessions uh, came out earlier this year, 2014. One of my favorite releases of the year so far. But let's talk about what else is coming out this year, what else we're looking forward to. Of course, Ace, right, Mitch? Yeah, you know, Ace has his uh, new album, Space Invader, Listen, the first single came out. It's, it's on iTunes. I think it sounds great. I, I, You know, it's hard to compare bands like Kiss and Ace to what they did in the 70s and go, oh, it's going to change our lives. But I'm just glad that he's still making music. I'm glad that I'll hopefully, you know, in the next year or 18 months, be able to go to a show and listen to him perform the songs that I love. Um, it, it'll be very exciting. And, of course, John uh, Astronomy, who co-hosts with you on Talking Metal, yeah. Wrote a song or two on this album. How cool is that? Yeah, it sounds like probably just one. I know he submitted, I think, two, but I think it's just going to be the one song that John co wrote, and it is that first song. Give me a feeling. Yeah. Now, now the uh, I could tell you some stories. Uh, the, John and I played in bands for years together, and we have a song from probably 1993 that John and I both wrote, which sounds a lot like Kiss, which a lot of our songs did. But um, the the riff in "Give Me a Feeling" is actually the riff from this this old song from our band from oh, nice. like 1993. So are you getting any yeah. royalties? Uh, you know, I'm I'm not, and uh, I will say that it, the only part of this this old song that Ace uses in in "Give Me a Feeling" is the part that John came up with. So I, I'm not sure I have any claims. any right or claims to uh, a songwriting credit on it. Um, but I actually I might play the song either on Talking Metal or Talking Rock uh, just so people can kind of hear it. And Ace's vocal melody is totally different. His lyrics are different. He's added a few riffs um but that main kind of strutter-esque riff uh guitar part is is john. uh, is john's yeah and and uh I, you know it's funny because uh, I, I was reading people talking about the guitar part in the song and how you know ace has kind of gotten back in touch with his his past and come up with this cool guitar part and i can honestly say john actually wrote the the most kiss sounding part of the song in my that's opinion great. is is the part that john wrote so that's great um, but it's yeah. gonna, you know it's, it's an album i'm looking forward to and uh I'm, you know i'm just glad that ace is still doing it and and that said i'm looking forward to kiss doing more um also so good, good on those guys another album i'm i'm really thrilled about is the the new tesla album simplicity um i got a copy it comes out June 10th, but I got a copy in advance. Uh, and I think I mentioned it on, a, on another episode with uh, Jeff Keith. Um, it's absolutely brilliant. I mean, this yeah. band hasn't lost a step at all. I know you're probably not as much a fan as I am, but they just haven't lost it. They're just great. Right. Cool, cool. And, and an album that you turned me on to, the Winger record, is very good, too. Yeah, uh, Better Days. Um, Better yeah. Days. That's that's a great one. Uh, other other stuff coming out that I'm really looking forward to is soon the new Judas Priest, Redeemer of Souls. Uh, the songs that they've posted on their website and on, on YouTube and all that just sounds like the band with the new guitars with, with Faulkner have really discovered how to, um, how can I put this? 
they have their classic sound, but I think they've got a little more edge to it. I, I think Faulkner brought a little something that they might have been missing, a little kick in the pants kind of thing. Right, yeah. I mean, Glenn Tipton said, without Faulkner, there would be no Judas Priest today. So mm-hmm. it was a pretty heavy statement. Yeah, absolutely. And the same thing goes with Tesla and Dave Rude. I think those new guitarists, they just bring that little added element that sort of tweaks the whole, the whole recipe, and, and it just makes it better. And then, of course, my favorite one, uh, coming down the pike soon is Blind Rage by Accept. You know, ah, ever okay, since yes. they got Mark Tornillo in the band, uh, that band has just... Listen, let's put it this way. I saw Accept open up for Kiss in 1984 on the... I guess it was a Lick It Up tour uh, by the time it rolled around to Montreal. And I thought they were average. I thought they were okay. And, you know, they went through the 80s and 90s and I, I sort of just didn't care about them. And then Blood of Nations came out with Mark on vocals, and I went, oh, wow, you know, this band's bloody awesome. Then Stalingrad came out, and I went, oh, yeah. And uh, I speak to Mark, and I speak to uh, Wolf once in a while, and I, I haven't heard any of the new songs, but just the excitement I hear when they talk about it, uh, you go, you know what, this one's probably going to be the best of the three. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm a big big fan of 80s era except and saw them on the Metal Heart tour for the first time was completely just blown away. So, I, you know, I really love Udo's voice. Right. However, what they have done with with Mark is uh, you know, it's almost a lot like what Queensryche has gone on to do with Todd Latore. It's like they've they've tapped back into the, you know, even though they don't have the original singer, they have the original classic sound back and and that's so exciting and mark just delivers the goods i mean that guy's voice you know is is so strong for a guy i don't know how old he is he's got to be probably late 40s or maybe even 50s you know and and well you know i'm I'm thinking about it i'm 45 and i think that when he was with a tt quick I think he was like four or five years older than me. So, yeah, he's okay. got to be somewhere in the like 49 to 51 kind of range, you know? So, yeah, well, yeah. a lot of singers hit that age and they just can't deliver anymore. He is not one of one of those guys. No, he, not at all. You know, and, and I, I, I've seen him smoking cigarette and drinking beer, too. So, I mean, I don't know how he keeps his voice in such good shape, but, uh, you know, it, it is it is on. And he can, you know, in a lot of ways, does does real justice to those classic accept songs when you see them live and he can hit some notes that I don't think Udo can hit anymore, you know? So, um, it, what a great addition to that band. And I'm excited for that record too. As a, as a classic lineup lover, do you, um, do you wish you Udo comes back? You know, I saw Udo in concert, uh, here in New York solo. Oh, within the last like eight months, and um, I, I really like what he's what he did with the last couple solo records, and and you know I didn't think they were quite as strong as the last two accept records, but they were good. However, I, I'm always up for for a reunion, but I, I don't know. It's not something I, I, I'm like longing for that much. However, his 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 you know his concert was really the attendance was really soft in in New York, and I know when wow. Accept played the same venue, it was like beyond sold out. So uh, mm-hmm. I, I think he probably needs the reunion at least on this North American soul, soil yeah. more than more than uh, Accept do. But I've heard you know they did. Uh, speak to him before they got Mark in the band and tried to get something happening. And he basically said no, because over in Europe, he makes much more money as a solo artist, or I mean, mm-hmm. he's essentially a so- solo artist, you know, fronting UDO, uh, than he would make back in, back in except as a member of that band. So, uh, yeah. So, so who knows? I don't know if we'll ever see that reunion. Uh, if, if we do, uh, I'm all for it, but it, you know, as long as Udo's not in the band, I think Mark is doing an uh, excellent, excellent job. Yeah, I, I, I personally prefer Mark in the band. Uh, since we're talking about singers that might re- do reunions and we're in sort of a New Jersey vibe talking about Mark, uh, another album coming out, and this will be the last one we talk about, is August 5th is Skid Row's United World Rebellion Part 2, the EP. 
did, did you get part one? It was only like four or five songs. Uh, I, I did not. I did not know. Yeah, you, you know, I, I love Skid Row. I, I thought there, there was sort of one good song on there. I'm, I'm sort of hoping that part two is is a lot better. Uh, would you want to see them reunite with Sebastian Bach? I don't think it's necessary. Um, I don't know. I, I think I think it would be kind of neat. I guess I have to admit. You know, I I, I okay. really really loved that first Skid Row record. Sure. Although <clears throat> over the years, some friends of mine and I have even had some run-ins with Sebastian, and I, I, I must say he he hasn't been the nicest guy to me personally. So. I, I, I've been a little tainted and and uh, yeah. haven't really been rooting for him as much as some people have been. Yeah, uh, yeah. A good friend of mine played guitar in his band uh, for a while, Metal Mike, and things did not end well between them. Yeah, I, I get a lot of those stories, which, which is too bad because he, he's a talent, but he seems to have some uh, some issues. Um, you know, we I think we all we all have a story, right? Though yeah, I try to keep yeah. mine under wraps, but. Uh, uh, what I find interesting about Sebastian these days is he's doing that TV show, um, what is it called, Face Off or something like that, Sing Your right. Face Off, and um, I, I really feel bad for him. Yeah. I mean, uh, when when they dressed him up as Lady Gaga, and uh, I, I don't want to bash anybody to bash anybody, but to me, I thought that was embarrassing. I think as an artist, sometimes you have to protect your brand and you have to protect your image. Right. And, um, you know, he just put out uh, Give Him Hell or whatever that new album was. And it's a great album. It, it's probably his best solo work ever. I mean, it's, it's, it's as good as almost any Skid Row album. And then a couple of weeks later, part of the promotion stuff is to dress up like Lady Gaga and, and, and sort of prance around the stage like a transvestite. And, um, wow, you just go, wow, what a bad fucking move. What, what are you doing? Yeah. What are you oh. doing, dude? And then, of course, he did. Uh, uh, he, he dressed up as Willie Nelson, and he dressed up as uh, the guy from Maroon Five. And and you, your mind just, it just you can't compute it. You just go, wow, that's the stupidest thing I've ever seen. W- what are mm-hmm. you doing? Yeah. And of course, he'll probably say, well, it's really cool. I have the balls to do it. Nobody else would do it. And I think the answer is, well, nobody else would do it because they realize it's fucking stupid. <laughs> right. Right. But right. Uh, anyway, I, I don't want to go on mm-hmm. to a. Sebastian bashing thing, but uh, yeah, that 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 one was was hard to understand. But uh, great hmm. voice, and he's got a great new album, so you know, toss up on that. But uh, Tesla, folks, you got to go buy it if you if you like the old stuff, you're gonna love the new stuff. Uh, except, let's wait and see. Judas Priest, let's wait and see. And if you haven't checked out Spell, uh, Canadian band out of Vancouver, pick them up. Give these guys a chance. Yeah, I recommend Spell for sure. Another one to look out for is a band called Wolf. They have a new record coming out later this year. Oh, good. I haven't heard of them. I'll have to yeah, check them out. They, they, this is probably their third or fourth record. They got like a real traditional, classic heavy metal sound. Um, I think their new one's coming out in Century Media. Uh, I'm a big Mastodon fan. Looking forward oh, to that album, too. So that'll be out soon, I think. Yeah, I think so, for anybody listening out there, if you're a new band, but I mean like a serious new band, not not four guys playing in a garage but you know you have some shows lined up and stuff in the record you know send send stuff over to me uh you know find me on facebook and uh you know maybe once in a while at the end of every show you know i'll feature a major major artist and then we can do some interviews with some of these newer guys maybe help you out a bit i think that could be interesting it's a great idea you know why not you know promote some of the the newer metal coming up and uh of course our next show mark's going to be exciting because we are going to be in the same room, in person, at the 4 by Fate Show. Of course, by the time you hear this, the 4 by Fate Show will be over. But uh, we're going to do some chatting, and hopefully we'll, we'll get the band, and we'll, we'll chat about what they're doing with John and Todd and Sean. Yeah. And uh, that'll be fun. And, um, you know, I've got another special episode coming up next week. Uh, Russ Dwarf, who co-hosts once in a while, of course, was in an accident with the Killer Dwarves. And... Um, well, you know, I've seen the pictures of the accident and of the injuries, and um, wow, I, I'm so traumatized I, to the point where I might actually have to go see a psychologist to, wow. to, to to work those pictures out of my out of my mind. It's it's really really frightening. Uh, 
But and uh, is he is he still in the hospital, Mitch, or is he at home recovering, or what? Do you know? Well, I do know, and 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 maybe you don't want to say. Well, but I'll, I, I'll say what I can, and and sort of keep it diplomatic. You know, he was in the hospital in Indiana. Uh, Indiana. Uh, they flew him by helicopter from the scene. Uh, he was released a couple of days later. He did not make the drive home to Toronto. They they put him on a plane uh, because because doing the drive would have been too difficult or uncomfortable. Um, the, uh, the, the lacerations and injuries sustained are so severe. Um, and I don't, I, well, I don't know how much more I can say. Okay. Uh, l- right. Let's just say that it, it it's, it's probably going to require some form of follow-up surgeries. Okay. Um, all their upcoming shows have been either canceled or postponed. In fact, let me rephrase that. They've been postponed. The Killer Dwarves do not cancel. They play all their shows, but these ones are going to have to wait. Um, they're supposed to start playing again in September. I wish them absolutely the best and certainly hope that that, that, that happens. And, I, and I, I have full confidence that it will. And uh, I tried all week to get Russ on the phone to do this. Um, you, you know, not to be um, a voyeur or anything like that. But uh, we speak every day on the phone, and uh, he kept saying, you know what, I, I just can't do it, I can't do it. But next week we're going to try to do it, and we'll, okay, we'll go through the story. And, um, you know, it, it's, it, it, was, it was hard, man. It was hard for me to, to hear that about that accident. It was hard for me to, to see the aftermath of, of that accident. And it's hard for me to uh, email him and phone him back and not hear back right away. Or, or hear back just one or two words of like, yeah, okay, and it, it, it's not the conversations we have, and it, it, it shows that he's he's needs to do better, and um, you know, I, I really hope uh, I hope I hope the best for him because it's, yeah. it's 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 important for for me that uh, Rust Dwarf is up and rocking and feeling good, and um, you know. Okay. I don't want to get too emotional, but it's, yeah, it, it's no. tough, man. It's 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 a tough situation. So, okay. Well, so there you go. Let's let's wrap it up at that. And yeah, uh, and and before we go, real quick, guys, support Mitch with a PayPal donation. His PayPal account is MitchMinute at AOL dot com, and of course, check Mitch's Facebook page out. And also, um, you know, we'll have his Twitter, his Facebook, everything linked through talkingmetal.com yeah. in the one-on-one section. And yeah. we have show notes up, you know, that uh, Mitch writes out for us that kind of break down the episode. So uh, check, check out talkingmetal.com and just go to the one-on-one section. Oh, you know, and I'll just add one thing. I, I've gotten a few emails about people saying, oh, when they go to iTunes, it just says episode 10, episode 11. There's no description. Well, yeah, you know, actually, if you actually click on the episode, a description will come out. I mean, we'll we'll try maybe to put it in the descriptor that you can see ep twelve. You know, whatever. Yeah, I'm going to try to but, at uh, least put one or or two of the guest names on the yeah, uh, on the epi- on the title line, so people can see that. That's kind of moving forward, guys. So hopefully that'll that'll help out a little but, bit. But for for those of you who had concerns in the past, you can still click on the episode description, and the write up is there. So. You know, do do check that out, and please uh, check out one on one, and check out Talking Metal, and check out what both Mark and I do. We we do similar but different shows, and they're both exceptionally great. So please check us both out. Okay, guys, thanks for listening, and we will talk to you soon. There you go. Thank you, Mark. 